This year is starting to look like a huge year for the Mac. Not only has Apple officially announced that they're transitioning away from Intel to their own custom silicon in their Macs going forward, they also revealed a huge update, a complete visual overhaul to Mac OS, and that is Mac OS Big Sur. I've got this installed on my MacBook, and today we're gonna dive in and take a look at what's new. Mac OS has looked pretty much the same for about six years since OS X Yosemite launched back in 2014 and Apple finally ditched the skeuomorphic design for the more familiar flat interface. Pretty much not a whole lot has changed, but this year that is no longer the case. This is by far and away one of the most major visual overhauls Mac OS has ever seen. Pretty much nothing stays the same. Heading to the desktop, pretty much everything you look at is new. The top bar is completely different with a new translucent effect as well as different icons. The stock icons for drives and folders are new as well, and the dock has been redesigned to give it a more iOS-y type feel. Similarly, the icons for Apple's default apps are now square, sort of in keeping with this new transition. But this design overhaul is more than skin deep. In fact, I didn't find a single thing that carries over from previous versions of Mac OS. Message notifications now have a lot more information and options. Folders look more like Catalyst apps and carry over the icon set used in iOS. Even pop-ups look different than they used to with different shaped buttons. Everything in Big Sur adopts a new, more rounded look. Even top bar menu items and right-click contextual pop-ups use it now. I think it's indicative of an impending change in the way Macs look and feel. More on that in a minute. There's also a new iPad-like control center in the top right that brings up some quick toggles, as well as brightness and volume sliders that look, well, a little out of place. Here's my conundrum. Why did they add this? Why did they add this slider for adjusting the brightness when we have function keys or touch bar controls? Why did they put that in here? The buttons here also look a lot more iOS-like, and in fact, now that I mention it, pretty much every single new change makes the buttons bigger, rounder, and more touch-friendly. Could it be? Could Mac OS be gearing up for future Macs with touch screens? We never thought that that would happen. Or maybe we're just seeing a more unified design language between iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, and Mac OS. Only time will tell. One thing that I think the new rounded design is most certainly indicative of is a switch in the future to Macs with a new design language centered around rounded display corners. Now this does make a lot of sense if you think about it because over the past years, Apple has been starting to use rounded display corners a lot more. The iPhone used to be squared off and now it's not. Similarly, the iPad used to have rectangular displays but now the iPad Pro has rounded corners. So I think it might actually be time for the Mac to join in on the fun. But anyway, moving right along to the everything that's new, about Mac OS this year, there are even new sounds. There are also some changes to the apps that ship with Mac OS. Namely, Messages is now adopting many of the features introduced in iOS. I have a video that you can check out on that right up at the top of the screen. Similarly, Maps adopts a more Catalyst looking interface, probably because these are now both Catalyst apps made with new menu and keyboard APIs. One app I'm really excited about is the new version of Safari. It looks a lot better and even allows you to change the background of your favorite screen, which is pretty nifty. And sure, Chrome's had that for a while, but it's nice to have. 
There's also a lot of new info here, such as privacy reports, series suggestions, and reading lists. There's also a new icon off to the left of the search bar, the privacy report tool. This thing is really cool. If we go to The Verge here, we can click on this icon and it'll show what trackers it's actually preventing. Now, Safari has had the ability to prevent websites from tracking your data and compromising your personal information for a little while now, but what's new about this is we can actually see exactly what it's doing. So if you click on this little drop down, you can see all of the different websites that Safari has prevented from tracking our information. And if we click on this little icon, there's a more detailed report available. But by far and away, the biggest update is not actually a new feature within macOS itself, but the future of where macOS is going to exist. Obviously, I'm referring to the upcoming transition away from Intel-based Macs and to Apple's own custom silicon. Now, they don't have any specifics available for us right now, much to the dismay of myself and most techies who were really hoping to get at least a teaser of what we should expect. However, Apple did say that by the end of this year, they're going to start releasing ARM-powered Apple Silicon-powered Macs, and within the next two years, everything is going to be running Apple's own processors. Now, it is a little bit clunky right now because Apple hasn't announced their brand name for their new processors, so we're just gonna have to refer to them as Apple Silicon or ARM processors for right now. So what's Apple's goal here? What do custom processors offer that they can't get from Intel? Well, first of all, as we all know, Apple loves optimization. They want the least amount of power consumption, the least amount of heat, and the most amount of performance. And lately, let's be perfectly honest, Intel hasn't quite been delivering on that. When Apple came out with products such as the 12-inch MacBook in 2015 or the radically thin 15-inch MacBook Pro in 2016, they were banking on Intel creating a new generation of processors on a 10 nanometer process that would run cooler and be more efficient as well as more powerful. However, as we well know, Intel really dropped the ball on the 10 nanometer processor game. And so a lot of recent Macs have had pretty poor thermals. Now, obviously that's not all Intel's fault. Apple does not do a good job with their thermal design. So switching to custom silicon could offer more performance, better battery life, and less heat, which is amazing. The biggest concern about switching to ARM was really compatibility. Are our existing apps going to continue to work. And the good news here is Apple seems very motivated in keeping the experience intact. The new version of Xcode is built to run native applications on Apple Custom Silicon. So in theory, all you would have to do is recompile. Stop! Stop! I don't have an answer for no! that. No! This new iOS 14 Siri is a crackhead. So in theory, all you should have to do is recompile your existing Mac applications, and in a matter of minutes, they should be working no problem. Emphasis on the should. There are still some aspects that we aren't sure about, such as Bootcamp or LumaFusion. There's definitely a lot of unknowns, and there are bound to be kinks that need to be worked out before this will be a full, complete transition. So it looks like Apple is taking a very cautious and thorough approach to this transition. They're not going to be leaving people in the dust. Now, sure, I'm, I'm confident that there are going to be applications or certain features of applications that do end up falling through the cracks, at least at first. If there's anyone that can pull off a transition like this, it's Apple. They have complete top to bottom control over their ecosystem and the developers that exist in the space. So I think it's a pretty fair bet that people are going to be chomping at the bit to get their apps working for a huge subset of their customers. Now, as far as what this means for future Macs, I think it means everything. I think at the end of this year, we are going to start to see some absolutely bananas new Macs coming out. For one, I think we're very clearly being set up for a new design with rounded displays, which means pretty much an entirely new design language 
But more importantly, I think we're gonna see a lot more MacBooks that don't have fans, that have thinner designs, different displays, Face ID, hopefully, rounded displays, mini LED. I think it's gonna be a really exciting time to be looking for a Mac. On the other hand, if you're skeptical about the transition to ARM and you don't wanna put up with that first gen technology, this might be a pretty good time because these are probably the last Intel Macs that will ever exist. Most of what Apple was focusing on was a transition, being able to support both custom silicon and Intel Macs. So don't worry, your 2020 MacBook Air is not gonna get dropped from the support list next year or the year after. It's probably, just like every other Mac, gonna keep getting updates for six to eight years, just like you would expect. So that's everything that's new with macOS Big Sur, as well as a sneak peek of what's to come. I'm personally very excited to see what this transition means for the Mac, and I'm glad that Apple hasn't completely forgotten about it as a couple of people have posited over the past couple of years. So as usual, I hope you found this video entertaining and helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think of this new update to macOS as well as the transition away from Intel. As usual, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani and check out my subreddit, which is linked in the description below. And with that, I will see you all in the next video.